in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, Daniel had a vision. And it came to pass. Once he lifted up his eyes, and as he was watching, there stood before him the river of Ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were, they were high, but the one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward. So that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west. And it came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And it came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and the ram and ran into him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close to the ram. He was moved with anger and smote the ram and broke his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him and there was none that can deliver the ram out of his hand Under the guise of speech codes and safe spaces and trigger warnings, these universities have tried to restrict free thought, impose total conformity, and shut down the voices of great young Americans like... And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. So it's coming from the west. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. He magnified himself even to the prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And a host was given unto him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered and shut down the voices of great young americans like those here today
when that 30 day decree is signed will be the beginning of YouTube strikes. Trump will make mention of the 30 days back on January 29th. So apparently it's already in there. Yeah, you know, like the fire from heaven show. Adolf Hitler. God on earth. There you go. There it is. Golan Heights. God on earth. Who's the... Another God... Look, he was banned from Glop. I'm pretty sure that's what it means. It's all propaganda. Archangel of Faith. The Lamb is named. To me, this book is pretty random. But it is time for a change. Is he Messiah? You know, Golan Heights is the Messiah. Golan Heights, God on Earth. You know, hey, are we fighting a goat? Are we fighting a goat? Like a, I don't know, a he-goat. I understand that there's codes hidden, hidden in this book. Earth gods. I mean, this is true. It, it is Rob's hope also. Here's another one. I've heard this saying before of I am that I am. It sounds very familiar with somebody that I heard before say that that's who they are. But, you know, I agree with this too. But, I won't go that far. So a lot of a lot of God words are lining up to um, Golan Heights, just in this book of Gematria. Oh God! Look at this. You know how Steve has, uh, what is it? 202 and then 1212 always matching and then the next one is the, the Jewish right well well you have click over here and along with the the God of gods North Korea the will Smith is in here it's going to be a surprise because everything's spiritual and the things that are literal are spiritual. The things that are you think are spiritual, they're actually literal. For when I say peace and safety, peace and safety equals goal and heights. 
King of Nordic. And of course, Adolf Hitler. And Most High God. Boy, I tell you what, this is fun. Uh, sincerely. This is an inter interesting one where these Clex numbers are the same as Derek Rose's number. And even look at this, even with the, the eights, eight, 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 like get the God number. You know how um, uh, Adolf Hitler was, was five, five, five. And then if you go with, if you go with this name, well, the, hey, you know he's he said he is who he says he is now, because Gematria confirms it. Apollyon's in here, and even the name Zach Arzman. I don't even know who the guy is. I just his name's all throughout. But you know everything's lining up with a, a dark spirit. I mean, if you go by the book, because it's all just a bunch of, apparently these are all demon Jesuses. Even Don Blitzer, you know, Wolf's, Wolf's brother, Flint, Michigan, Illuminat T-I, T, Illuminat Tai. I mean, this is true. This is what God is getting ready to show us. Osiris child, Golan Heights, Osiris child. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people by silencing them. And through his policy also he shall cause his craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many, and shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. It's true. Wherefore, shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astounded at the vision, but none understood it. Until the knowledge increases with the next verses. And in the first year of Darius, the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm, in the first year, Daniel understood the books by the number of years. Wherefore, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 full years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Next up. Next up, we're going to see him again. I'm just giving you guys a sneak peek of you know how they like they print the um tv guide right i mean this is a long time ago but when they print the tv guide you kind of know what what show is coming up and and you know like what time it's going to come on it's all entertainment all of it just remember them that's all there's many events to come. It's not just one on it, There's many dates. There's many shows. There's many premieres. I mean, technically, I guess the next 
the next uh, the victim is the Golan Heights. I just didn't have that on my list. So it's just something that has taken over the uh, well, the news on YouTube. Trump announced it. Golan Heights. I can't wait until April 5th to see this next news dominating event. The leopard has to come up somewhere in this, uh, in the, uh, the battle, the leopard. Cause these, these are the main bad actors. Trump even said it. They're bad actors. Today for their enduring commitment to defeating ISIS in the Middle East and around the world. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his great authority. This beast has all these, all this power in one. Because he was like unto a leopard. And his feet, they were as the feet of a bear, which has three ribs in its mouth. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, you got the leopard, which is the Isis actors, the bad actors, the beast. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and he has feet of a bear, and that bear is going to come from the east, and it's going to, it's going to run, and then once that, once that bear runs, over into that pleasant land and he's going to have three ribs in his mouth and the mouth that he has on him well he speaks like a lion but remember the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority but don't forget that their horses you know th theirs the opposite of them also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves and their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar and they shall fly as the eagle that has to eat can the can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots then May you also do good that that are accustomed to do evil. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evenings shall spoil them, and a leopard, these Isis characters, shall watch over their cities. You know, with all their cameras and everything. Everyone that goes out Thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgression are many and their backslidings are increased. But see, this is God um, using the lion and the wolf and a leopard to break America in pieces. Just, you know, look, you're going to see it. We're going to be broken in pieces because of our transgressions that are many and because of our backslidings that are increased. The wolf also, also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall 
lead them. You know, a little child, like a child of God. Now, just understand when I say the leopard is Isis and and the bear is Iran and Steve is uh, the beast. With all of these, I'm just telling you what their script is. It's not really what God is intending when he's talking about these these beasts. Great vantage point. Look, we're on the mountains here. And by the way, just with a strategic and by the way, just with a strategic great vantage point. Look, we're on the mountains here. And whoever controls this area can see down at their enemy. So Iran or Islamist rebels can control the Golan? Iran, Islamist, uh, what do you say, gold medals? In other words, ISIS. Iran or Islamist rebels can control the Golan? They're looking down at Israel. It's easy pickings, easy target. Israel controls this territory. They can monitor and keep an eye on all the bad actors who an eye on all the bad actors, bad actors who are operating here right now. Correct, Eric. If you actually look all the way up to the Hermon Mountain, on one of the peaks, which is by the way the highest peak is in Syria, but on the Israeli peak, you may be able to locate these facilities. This is an Israeli intelligence base. And that base is deeply looking into Damascus. What's Iran's goal here in Syria? And why are they at Israel's uh, doorstep right now? Just a few three miles ribs away. Between hey, his mouth? Ali, we could walk and be in these villages controlled by Iran and Assad in 25 minutes from where we're standing right now. And this is Israeli territory. Right now, as we are looking at both Iraq and Syria, we could see there are Iranian-backed Shiite militias. Oh, man, look at that scary guy. Both Iraqis, as well as the Hezbollah, Phew, Afghans, man, and others, operate in this land corridor stretching all the way from Iran all the way to the Mediterranean. The wow. Iranian regime, as far as is concerned, this is the ultimate dream of the Iranian regime to create a land corridor, a presence on the ground through the use of proxies. The situation in Iraq and the war in Syria basically gave the Iranian regime a golden opportunity to do that. And they have been unfortunately quite successfully doing that. They have the base in southern Lebanon with Hezbollah on Israel's border. Now they want to establish another front against Israel right where we're standing on the Golan. How does Israel count? Israel right where we're standing on the Golan. Israel right where we're standing on the Golan. Right where we're standing on the Golan. Right on the Golan. How does Israel counteract that? What has Israel been doing to battle against that Iranian influence at its doorstep. Israel sends very clear signals to the Iranian regime and the Hezbollah as well, both diplomatically and non-diplomatically, basically saying very clearly the Golan Heights is off the limit. One of the interesting aspects in the context of that is that the presence of Russia in Syria, as of now, plays significantly positive role as far as Israel is concerned, because Vladimir Putin is tuned to the Israeli strategic interest. All right, just understand it. This Golan Heights is the reason, is the, it's the reason for World War Three, because it's, it has everybody against it. Trump has everybody against it, except for the other witness that is going to be dead in the middle of the street for three and a half days. And then after three and a half days, they're going to be raptured up out of here. Him, him and Trump get raptured up out of here and then Obama takes over. Just. Israel will not stand and will not tolerate the creation of yet another front in the Golan Heights, either by directly or indirectly forces that are subdued to the Iranian control. I would have talked about that more in our next segment, Avi. Uh, I would have talked about that more in our next segment, Avi. Uh, as you said, this the Golan is a red line for Israel. The Golan is a red line for Israel. No, we will not allow Iran to establish another terror satellite in the Golan. Uh, Russia... See, so that's what reason number one. Which is a wild card. We're going to talk about that after the break with Avi Melamed, our good friend of uh, Russia, Syrian refugees, and how it affects you in America. How the chaos here in Syria affects everyone watching this show right now. It's the Watchmen. It's Christians United for Israel from the Syrian border with our good friend, national security expert, intelligence expert, Middle East expert, Avi Melamed. So this was... Two years ago, 
the script has been written. It has been written. Everything has been written already. This is two years ago. I like to go back at videos that once something happens and I know what, what their whole plan is behind it, then go back and hear. You learn a lot about when they talk about the, the things that are coming up. You, you catch their words. Earlier this afternoon, President Trump overturned decades of U.S. policy in the Middle East by announcing that the U.S. will now recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That is a strategic 40-mile strip of land on the West Bank. West Bank. So the Golan Heights overlooks Lebanon here. It overlooks Israel. It overlooks Syria. And it overlooks, I believe this is Jordan. So kind of like how um, Mount Ararat overlooks all four areas at, at the height of the mountain. So you can see 200 miles each way, like 200 fallen angels each way. The Syrian-Israeli border, which Israel captured during the 1967 Six-Day War. In a tweet, Mr. Trump said it was of critical strategic and security importance to the state of Israel and to regional stability. It is a shift that could both have a major impact on America's relationship with the Arab world and potentially boost the political fortunes of Mr. Trump's close ally, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, ahead of next. There he goes. So there's the second witness. This is so definitely going to happen. Trump and Netanyahu are going to be killed in the streets on May 14th or 15th, and then after three and a half days, they're going to rise up and they're going to float up out of here, and then Obama takes over. For a few days and then he's destroyed and then steve takes over for the next few days but then it's like everybody's partying for three and a half days and then we get the um final party next month's election in israel netanyahu tweeted his thanks to mr trump calling it a bold decision quote at a time when iran seeks to use syria as a platform to destroy israel the united ah. At a time when Iran, you know, when you run from the fear of the noise, seeks to use Syria as a platform to destroy Israel, President Trump boldly recognizes Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Look, I've never heard of the Golan Heights until they talked about the freaking Golan Heights. Now I'm looking at it and seeing what is the big deal of the Golan Heights. Once you add that number 52, then there's one dot connected. And then you just keep connecting the dots and connecting them. And then go in Gematria and see what Golan, Golan Heights even means. That is a strategic 40-mile strip of land. And by the way, just with a strategic great vantage point, look, we're on the mountain. Israel annexed the Golan Heights in 1981. It is obviously part of Israel. There's no prospect that Golan Heights will ever be given back. And you know, Lou, there's been talk for decades. And strategically, it would be a disaster to do so. I think we... Hey, hey, Steve, you, you look awfully like an eagle in this picture. I'm just wondering, was it purposely done? Probably not, right? Because you don't do things strategically, do you? Strategically, do you? Take notice. Before all this strategic talk, before the strategic talk, three days before it, how am I supposed to know they're going to talk about strategic unless I'm reading the script and I'm just giving it to you guys? Because look, I have the authority to take their script and just tell you what it is. I mean, it's going to start happening so, so clearly that people are going to start thinking that I actually have their script and I'm just reading it. This is guaranteed by God. No, the Bible never said that. That was a conclusion that I had and I talked about it and, and yelled it and screamed it. And <laughs> 
any time we break a law of God, we sin, and it's we might as well face up to it. I was totally convinced, totally convicted of it, but I was wrong. I was wrong. I have sinned. stroke that I got slowed me up enormously, but slowly on is coming back and slowly on I'm getting uh, able to do those things again, but it takes time. What do you think brought on the stroke? You were doing open forum seven nights a week, you had Bible study, twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday. You have the Alameda service. Do you think that your incredibly stressful schedule contributed to that? No, no, I think it was God's plan. I, <laughs> I was quite healthy. I really was quite healthy, but I think that was God's plan too, for whatever his purposes may have been. I, I, I feel that very strongly. The result of May, of April, <laughs> what, when was it? <laughs> May Poor guy. The, 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 <laughs> he forgot the result the date. of that is that, uh, number one, for the first time in history, the whole world was aware there was a Bible. I thought we had until 2012, but now some wingnut in California named Harold Camping says the end of the world is coming May 21st. Harold and this crowd have got billboards across North America, including here in Toronto, and they're trying to get it all ready for the big day. Given the short notice, though, I'm relying on my training in duck and cover from public school. The idea seems to be sweeping the sun newsroom. It's my friend Sarah under the next desk. Hi, Sarah. Listen, I'll tell you, though, this is no way to spend your final hours. I got a better idea and a better place to do it. Follow me. So this is Toronto it's news. down to Doomsday. There's no place I'd rather be than Dundas Square. Do a little last-minute shopping at the Eaton Center, and I do mean last minute. Plus, you're going to be able to watch it all unfold, all the terrible, horrible, earth-crunching details as the comet comes in. You're going to be able to watch it all on the big screen. Oh man, wait until that guy sees what's getting ready to happen. It ain't it ain't what Harold Camping said. It's what I'm saying. I just figured out that May 21st is the 7,000th anniversary of Noah's flood. How he does that exactly, no one can figure out. But he says that's the end of one can figure out. But how he does that exactly, no one can figure out. How he does that exactly no one can figure out, but that's right. He says that's the anniversary, and he says that on that day, believers are gonna to go to heaven and the rest of us are gonna go you know where. And that's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. Those souls went to heaven and hell began right here on earth. Well the future shop's gonna to have to change their name. Here's one of the things on my bucket list before the world ends, a lap dance. It says here the girls never stop, but of course on May 21st they're gonna. Here with Peter, nothing like a little comfort food as the end of the world draws nigh. Of course the subway runs right under Dundas Square, so as long as the apocalypse ends at Finch, hop a train and get the hell out of town. This guy is going to shit himself when he sees what the elite have in store. So that's it from Dundas Square. Mark May 21st in your calendar and get ready, folks. From now until the end of time, first in your calendar and get ready, folks. Dundas Square. Mark May 21st in your calendar. Mark May 21st in your calendar and get ready, folks. Mark May 21st in your calendar and get ready, folks. Seven, seven, seven years ago. Eight, seven. If dead birds and dead fish around the world don't freak you out, then some billboards around town just might do it. They actually named the date May 21st. Apparently, the world will end on that day. News 10's Suzanne Fong tells us about a gloom and doom. 
Well, you can actually find a handful of these billboards around Sacramento County, and the message is a simple one. Mark the date, May 21st, 2011. To May 21st, 2011. To May 21st, 2011. Thousands of drivers pass them every day, but how many are actually giving the message a second thought? The billboard indicates that, that Christ is returning, which we all Christians believe in that. But take that message one step further. The billboard reads, joy to the world. Hey, the Steve, is isn't, this the, isn't this when you were cast down to the earth? So it's very significant, isn't it? Coming May 21st, 2011. How do they arrive to that? I have no clue. <laughs> if it is the truth that the Christ is coming, it would have been the end of the world, yes. The billboard also lists the radio station 88.1 FM. Harold Campen never said May 21st was the end of the world anyway. They always throw that in there. He said October 21st was the end. Um, FamilyRadio.com. We bring you Open Forum. We try to reach Family Radio Worldwide, based in Oakland, and we try to reach ministry leader Harold Camping, seen here in this YouTube video. He calculated the May 21st date based on his reading of the Bible. He broadcasts over the airwaves every evening, talking about May 21st. Hey, guess, guess, guess how I'm coming up with my dates and events and, um, and who's who and, um, and all that kind of stuff? Because I'm reading the Bible, too. Same thing. First, 2011. The end is going to be May 21. As for John Rowlich, who owns and operates Silver Star Motors, the Carmichael business right across the street from the billboard on Fair Oaks Boulevard. Date is uh, May 21st, 11, which to me it doesn't mean much at all because it'll be another day. Rowlich believes in Judgment Day, though. It'll be totally different than what this billboard is indicating. Totally different than what this billboard is indicating. It'll be totally different than what this billboard You're is damn indicating. sure right. And Rowlich says, Camping and his group have posted other billboard messages before. In fact, they've posted other ju Judgment Days in the past that, of course, have not panned out. <laughs> oh, man. They all believed in it, but they were aware there was a Bible. I remember before May 21, I was out there really uh, sounding the alarm. I get some more billboards up, get some more of this, get some more of that. We spent actually millions of dollars was spent, and a lot of people be spent a lot of their income just to tell the world that there was such a thing as a Bible. We, at that point, from one standpoint, totally discredited the Bible because we were saying the Bible would give the date and we were convicted, convinced, along with many others, that we knew the date, but that didn't happen. So we not only assisted God in making the knowledge of the Bible available, but also uh, assisted God in telling the world that no organization, no matter how much they've studied the Bible or how careful they are, is going to tell you what the date is. That is something that is only known by God. That is something that is only known by God, known by God. We, we do not, we will not know the day. No human being will know the day before it happens. No human being will know the day before it happens. King Neb wanted his dream to be interpreted, so he asked those Chaldeans, and they answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asks such a thing at any magician or astrologer or a Chaldean. That is true. You don't ask a Chaldean or an astrologer or a magician to interpret your dreams. And it is a rare thing that the king requires. There is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is 
not with flesh. So all these wise men, they were getting ready to get slain because uh, the king was, he was pretty angry and furious and fast and furious. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And he sought Daniel and his fellows. But see, Daniel was like, hold, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Daniel answered, answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was going forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known unto Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time. Just give him time, like, yeah, almost like seven years, seven, almost eight full years seven full years, and that he would show the king the interpretation. The debate is, that is something that is only known by God. We do not, we will not know the date. No human being will know the date before it happens. So have you changed then 